Today, I'm going to walk you through building a profit and loss model in Excel using the bottom up method. Hi everyone, my name is Luciano Perdomo and welcome to the Birds and Group YouTube channel, a channel dedicated to helping entrepreneurs and small business owners. Okay, so what are we going to cover today? Well, firstly, we're going to start with the standard formatting of a financial model. Then we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of actually building a model step by step in Excel. And lastly, we're going to cover um, some time saving Excel shortcuts that can help you model a bit faster and make your life a little bit easier. Okay, so let's ask ourselves an overarching question. What is a financial model? Simply put, uh, a financial model is a forecast of a business's performance over time, typically a series of five years, um, and it looks at things like sales, cost of goods, gross profit, operating expenses, and then uh, other, profitability, other profitability measures like EBITDA, EBIT, and then net income. So that's a financial model, and it's typically built in Excel. Now, what is a bottom-up financial model? Well, a bottom-up financial model uh, takes internal company-specific data. All right, let's assume that we have a coffee shop, and our internal data is number of customers, number of cups, price per cup, cost per cup, uh, labor cost, and rent, and utilities. So it's very specific and it's built, it's taking all that data to back into uh, in some part revenue and the other part, um, when you include all these factors, your profitability. So that's what a bottom-up financial model is. So without further ado, let's get into the nuts and bolts of this video. Let's show you how to model and make you a more well-rounded entrepreneur uh, who comes out knowing how to build a financial model in the bottom-up method. <laughs> Okay, so per my introduction, today we're going to start by going through and building from scratch um, a bottom-up pro forma profit and loss statement of a coffee shop. Okay, so we're going to go through proper formatting. Um, we're going to go through how to build formulas. We're going to go through Excel shortcuts that you can use to build formulas. And then we're gonna go through running a sanity check of your model, okay? So first things first, we wanna be able to distinguish our inputs or our assumptions from our outputs. So here's an example. Your inputs are in blue and they're hard-coded, meaning there's no formula. Your outputs are in black and reference your inputs. So perfect example right here, we're referencing the year within which we wanna start the model. So we want to start the model in 2022. That's referenced here. And then we have formulas to be able to build out each year there on after. Now, if I wanted to change this, this will change. So if I wanted to start in 2023, this number here or this cell here changes to 2023. And then it carries forward. But let's revert back to 2022. Now, we, wanted, we want to be able to identify a few key drivers. Okay, in the case of this coffee shop, our key drivers are number of customers, the rate at which the number of customers increases year over year, the number of cups each customer buys on average, right, and the price per cup. So those are the main revenue drivers of the model. Then we have the cost side of the model. So we're looking at our cost per cup, which drives our gross profitability here. Then we have um, some high-level assumptions on cost, certain fixed costs as a percentage of sales. Um, and the reason we do this is because it's really hard to tell what it is you're going to spend on things like labor, rent, SG&A, or other kind of general fixed expenses when you haven't even really started looking for a building or, or started to con you know contract employees. So what we do is we take an industry average. So I went into a database called Ibis World. And I looked at financial ratios for retail coffee shops and found that, you know, on average, labor as a percentage of sales is 14%, rent is 3%, and SG&A is 9%. And then we, we just came up with high-level assumed tax rate um, just based on what the general tax rate is for a private company of this size. Okay, 
So that covers our assumptions and that covers the proper uh, format in which they should be laid out. And next, we want to look at the format of our actual model and profit and loss and really what, what investors are going to be scrutinizing. Most importantly, you, you really want to be focused on verbiage and nomenclature. Uh, we want to be able to use U.S. GAAP's uh, standard accounting terms because that's something that everyone understands. Even folks outside of the U.S. understand U.S. GAAP terms. So, for example, cost of goods sold, that's a standard U.S. GAAP term. Gross profit, operating expenses, EBIT or operating income, and net income. So this is a very basic high-level P&L that lays things out in a very universal format that's easy to understand um, and also distinguishes your inputs or hard-coded cells or what we call our assumptions from our actual formulas and calculations. Okay, so enough about formatting. Let's get into the meat and potatoes and talk about how to actually model. So the first thing is first, we want to look at the number of customers year over year. And what we're saying is that we're starting with a base of 100,000 in our first year, which is 2022, and then increasing that by 20%. So the first thing we do is we reference our base year. And the next thing we do now is we grow this by 20%, but using this cell here so that we can change it. We can, if we think we, we're going to be more conservative, we can grow it by less, we can grow it by more. But let's start with 20%. So what we want to do is we want to take this cell okay, our base, and essentially multiply it by 1 plus 20% or 1.2. Now, I'm just going to click control enter here. This will, this helps me carry formulas over through all cells that I've selected. Well, we have a break in our model. That's not good. That's not good at all. Well, why is that happening? Well, what's happening is Excel is recognizing that I'm carrying the formula over, so it's continuously going cell over cell and not referencing the proper cells. So how do I circumvent this? So it's this method called anchoring. So anchoring locks in place the cell you want to keep locked in place, which is this 20% cell. Okay, and you can do that by, press, by pressing Fn, F4, or just F4 depending on your settings in Excel. And now Excel has anchored this cell here, okay, but let me flow through and carry over with our base. So it's compounding. So in the first year, I'm growing by 20%, I get to 120. Then I grow 120 by 20% the following year. Then I grow 144 by 20% through the following year, and so on and so forth. So now I have my number of customers year over year. Now, let's do a sanity check. Let's make sure this works. So I can change this and say, well, I think I'm going to grow by 10% by instead of 20. You see how all this changed? But let's go back to 20. All right. Next, we want to forecast our revenue. And keep in mind, we are going to use an anchoring technique, a technique here, um, just like we did above here in our, custom, in our customer model. So what we're saying is, okay, well, we have number of customers, but now we've got to factor in, okay, well, we have, to, we have to be able to factor in price, right? Now we want to anchor this cell here, but we only want to anchor the row, right? Because we want to carry over the column, okay? And I'll, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Next, we want to be able to anchor down our price. We don't want that moving. We want to make sure this is... Nice and sane, but we're only going to anchor down the column and not the row. And you'll see why in a minute. And next, we want to anchor down entirely both row and column, just like we anchored down the growth percentage in our customer in our customer growth model. Okay, the number of cups per customer. Okay, so this is our baseline revenue. But now we've got to look at our cost element. Okay, so what we're going to do, all right, because we were able to anchor down uh, the row here, okay, our number of customers is going to carry over into the cost line. Because we we're only able to anchor down the column, all right, 
our cost per unit is going to carry over into the cost line. And because we anchored down entirely both row and column for the number of cups, we're going to be able to carry over our, uh, our entire cost of goods sold. Okay, so we can do this by taking this row here and selecting it entirely, and then coming down here, all right, and pressing Control Enter. Voila, we easily were able to model out our cost. So now we can model our gross, our gross profit, and this is a very easy, an easy formula. So all you have to do is do revenue minus cost of goods sold, and that's your gross profit. Next, to provide investors with a barometer of how your profitability is doing year over year on an apples to apples basis, what we want to do is do our gross profit divided by our revenue. And voila. Now this stays the same year over year because both revenue and and costs are, go are growing in line and we're not changing revenue year over year or revenue per cup year over year and we're not changing our cost per cup year over year. So that's why this stays the same. Okay, so similar to what we did up here, we're gonna do a very similar thing down here in terms of anchoring certain cells. Um, whether it's a complete anchor of row and column, a partial ankle, anchor of a row, or a partial anchor of a column. So we wanna be able to model our labor, and we're modeling labor uh, on a percentage of sales basis. So what we do, is we're going to anchor revenue, but we're only going to anchor the row, okay? Because we don't want that moving, but we want it to move across columns, okay? Then we're going to anchor this 14% here, but we're only going to anchor the column because we want to be able to move down rows, okay? And stay in a column, which is column C, okay? And same thing that we did here, we're going to select this group of cells, we're going to go down, we're going to press control enter. And now you've been able to very quickly model out your operating expenses or your, you know, more general kind of fixed costs on a percentage of sales basis. So now we're going to sum up our total cost. And there we go. This is our total cost right here. Now, we want to do a quick sanity check. We want to make sure that these formulas carried through correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to do all these cells here as a percentage of sales and make sure that they match these cells over here. So we're going to look at in the terminal year as a percentage of revenue. And we want to anchor this revenue number. We wouldn't want it carrying it down. We just want to take each of these, flow it down, but make sure that they're still staying attached to this revenue figure here. Okay. So, so far we match, but Let's make sure that it matches perfectly. So this formula here should read 0%, and it does. So we're good. Our formula is carried through correctly. Next, another measure of profitability we want to look at is our operating income, or EBIT, earnings before tax, earnings before interest and tax. So we're going to take our gross profit and subtract it and subtract our total expenses, and this is our EBIT. This is the number that we get our tax off of. So we're, this is the number that we're going to pay taxes on. So just like we did here with gross margin as a percentage of sales, we're going to look at operating income as a percentage of sales to compare apples to apples year over year. And again, this will stay the same because we're not changing any cost elements or price elements year over year. We're keeping things consistent, and we're really just growing the number of customers and um, growing revenues and cogs in line together. So there's a very linear relationship here. Next, we're going to calculate our tax. And now what we're going to do is we're going to anchor, okay, our earnings before uh, interest and tax or our EBIT or operating income. And we're going to, we're only going to anchor the row, not the column, so that we can carry forward, okay. And then we're going to anchor here our tax rate. And this we can anchor entirely both row and column because we're not carrying anything down anymore. So this is our tax. And then we want to arrive at our net income. And net income is typically what you're able to take home and put in your pocket as an owner. So we're going to do earnings before tax minus tax 
And now we have net income or earnings after tax. And again, we want to establish an apples to apples comparison year over year um, by doing our net income as a percentage of sales or what we call our net income margin. Okay, so I'm gonna pause here. So we've now built our model entirely. Okay, so we have our, the years that we're using in the model, year over year. We have the number of customers growing year over year based on our drivers here or the inputs that we've selected. We have our revenue driving now that's pulling from here, okay, and from the assumptions panel and that's growing consistently year over year. We have our cost of goods sold, our gross profit, our gross margin, our fixed expenses, our earnings before tax, and finally our net income. So this right here is a complete high level pro forma model with the proper formatting in terms of inputs or hard coded cells, which are in blue, and then our black font cells, um, which are calculations or, you know, the formulas that actually make up the nuts and bolts in the model. So this is your first model built from scratch in Excel. And remember, you know, be consistent with formatting and use proper U.S. gap accounting uh, terminology. Thank you. Good. Goodbye. <laughs>